Welcome to E3. Warning. This liquid is rated supernatural. For the composition of its content is not scripturally recommended for human consumption, so drinker's discretion is thoroughly advised. And you may think that you have tasted the best of wine and finest of spirits or experienced the greatest of highs and crossed the limits of alcohol, but you are only human until you have tasted the booze of the spirit and you are no drunkard until you begin to ooze of secret waters. So, drinker's discretion is thoroughly advised. I was born human. Iniquity was my origin until once upon the midnight a star led me to the legend whose blood is liquor. He loves to stupor, took more than a bullet to get me high, told the devil to smirn off, and in one magic moment in the victory shout, I lost mortality when the spirit broke out. Have you tasted wine? I do not speak of the likes of Gouda, this is the ultimate, a certain brand of Judah, not made for mortal tongues, for humans can hardly tolerate strong drink, how much more? God, car, I, I do not tell of the content of bottles, no, divinity does not drink from bottles like mortals, for bottles cannot contain burning fire, so we drink from portals, with buckets of joy we draw from bottomless wells of epignosis, and in cups of rema we make toasts from the depths of exegesis, have you drunk the blood booze? or swallowed life after death? Have you tasted the fire smooth or drunk the sound of heaven touching earth? What language do you speak and to what tribe do you belong? I, I do not belong to a physical country or a natural region. I, I belong to the blood tribe descendants of the Zion nation. For though we are in this world representatives of countries and of flags, we are citizens of heaven. Our humanity is but a camouflage for. Without these costumes of flesh and bones, we will be of little use on this abode. We are a people of burning lips and an unknown tongue. We communicate in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Our species was created in Genesis 2, recreated in Galatians 2, and customized in the Acts of Apostles 2. We are neither French nor German. We are neither French nor German, English or American, Igbo or Yoruba. We are supernatural, the Trinity in human containers. We hail from the Avatar dynasty of heavy drinkers, Graham, Idahosa, Wigglesworth, or a few of our ancestors, avatars we are, preservers of the universe, masters of time, lights of God, sounds of time. We are neither alcoholic nor human. We are supernatural and we drink unrestricted and without limits with the boundless capacity for the spirit we drink with stammering lips of an, and another tongue shameless audacity reckless abandon we drink and we get ultra high for the spirit is the power station we are transmission line so we drink to ignite and hard as it may try the world can never boast of stupor like us for the lord is our bartender elohim fills our cup and what they call booze we call the spirit and what they call groove we call fellowship we and as we ooze of the booze of life we render death of no use it's no news that darkness takes the flight to the fuse of light so we drink fire to a line we are high we know they see with clear eye have you shot adonai and if you've ever been to the club called chalk no jokes you're gonna say our head the touch for once upon a busy afternoon we postponed the sunset and made a mockery of the clock and when the egyptians saw the red sea we saw a road network we we are neither stranded we are neither never stranded never broke we command the cash we trample on gold for where you see the river we just might see the bank and what you call tilapia we just go call cashiers. We, we are neither alcoholic nor are we human. We are naturally supernatural, proudly bloody. We drink the most high God, we eat his body. And you may think that you have tasted the best of wine and finest of spirits. We've experienced the greatest of highs and crossed the limits of alcohol. But you are only human until you have tasted the booze of the spirit. And you are no drunkard until you begin to ooze of secret waters. For while the consumption of counterfeit liquor climaxes in embarrassing encounters with goddess, the consumption of the spirit triggers a combustion in the spirit and the eruption of living waters. 
Be not drunk with alcohol, but become authentic drunkards, making tremendous power available and with God car. Drinking responsibly is completely irresponsible for. You can drink to stupor when the spirit is your liquor and this liquid is rated supernatural. For the composition of its content is not scripturally recommended for human consumption. So drinkers this question is thoroughly advised God God the ultimate discovering purpose begins with self-discovery hallelujah discovering purpose begins with self-discovery you can never truly say you have found your purpose when you really don't know who you are. So you must ask yourself a very fundamental question. Who am I? Who am I? Yeah, as Christians, it's, it's easy for me to come here and preach a very nice message. And I tell you all that Jesus has done for you. I tell you all that you have become in Christ Jesus. But until you align it with your deepest sense of self and sense of personal value, you will still live a life of struggle. And I've said this before that eternal peace and fulfillment is when you live in harmony with your deepest sense of, of self, your deepest person. When you live in harmony with yourself, then you can find fulfillment. Praise God. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians eleven twenty eight. Let me just read that scripture and set some. 1 Corinthians eleven twenty eight. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. My focus there is let a man examine himself. So the quest for self-discovery is scriptural because the Bible recommends that we should examine ourselves. 2 Corinthians 13. Examine yourself whether you be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Prove your own selves means check your own values. Check your own values. Prove yourselves. Know ye not your own selves? How that Jesus Christ is in you? Except ye be reprobate? Can't you confirm that, can, is it wrong? Can you not confirm that the, the elements of the personality of Jesus is reflected in you unless you are hardened? Are you here today? We have read so many things about what Jesus has become to us. He is our righteousness, he is our justification. All those things he has become has to become part of you. It has to become you. Your understanding of yourself must be hinged against all that Jesus did. You know, of course, in the grace movement, it is very easy to whitewash you. You know, you know like, is it, is it Chris Pratt that was speaking recently? He said, you know, you know in the, is it Chris Pratt? Chris Pratt, you know, he was speaking recently, you know, he was trying to encourage these young school leavers and told them that, look, nobody is perfect. You know, all those ideas that, oh, I am, uh, you are disjointed in your character and behavior. He said, oh, I'm perfect like this. Now lie, nobody is perfect. You need to seek for improvement. You know, in the grace movement, it's very easy for us to whitewash and say that, yes, though you have the most flawed character, you you know, yes, you are okay like that. God loves you like that. Yes, God loves you like that. But you have a responsibility to align your deepest values and personality to that which Jesus did. And that's what Paul is saying here. Unless you are reprobate, you must align it. There must be an alignment. Praise God. Are we together? So it's not, it's not to give you validation for bad bad behaviors and bad characters and flawed moral compass. No, it's not to give you, the, the grace movement is not to give you validation for that. That's not what it's to give you validation for. 
So that's what Paul is saying. So examine yourself without you being the faith. Review your deepest values, whether it's aligned with what you believe. Whether it's aligned with what you have used, what you now use as your standard bearer, which is the scriptures. You must align your deepest values to be sure that there's an alignment. To be sure, you must review your deepest values to be sure that there is an alignment. You must prove yourself. You must test yourself. Hallelujah. Are we still here? Galatians 6, 4. Make a careful exploration of who you are and the work you have been given. And then sink yourself into that. Don't be impressed with yourself. Don't compare yourself with others. Each of you must take responsibility for doing the creative best you can with your own life. Praise the Lord. So it is scriptural, it is biblical for you to sink deep in a quest for self-fulfillment, self-discovery. So the question you must ask yourself is this. Do you know yourself? What are the things that define you? Are you clear about what you want from life? Are you clear? Do you, do you know yourself? If you see yourself in the dark, will you recognize you? Praise God. Do I have Christians here today? Do you have a sense of purpose? What makes you happy? Are you happy with your life? Not knowing yourself can result in an unfulfilled existence. You live life struggling. You live life confused. You wake up, how many people here, I'm sure there are some people here, you wake up at night crying, but you don't really know why. Has it happened to anybody here? You just wake up and you realize that you were crying, but you don't really know why. Why am I crying? There is a deep question in your heart that you need to answer, and that's the question of who am I? Why am I like this? Why am I a victim of my own self? Why am I a victim of life? You must ask yourself this very fundamental question. That's what Galatians 6.4 seek to achieve. Hallelujah. Not knowing yourself also means you have, no, you have no clear idea of what your inner values are. You have no clear idea of what your core beliefs are. You have no clear idea of what your life's goals are. And you know it's been said that a ship that does not know where he's going every Every wind is favorable. Anywhere belief is. Uh, you know, in football, you know, there's what you used to call anywhere belief is. So you see the guy, he doesn't know how to play ball. He doesn't, so, you know, it's very common in those days in secondary school. We are playing football in the field. If the guy is facing his own goal and the ball enters his leg, just shoot it. I mean, we call it anywhere belief is. <laughs> he, will, he will score his own goal. <laughs> For a man that is not clear about his belief system, for a man that is not clear about his convictions, you are like that. And it's my prayer that everyone that steps into this church, when taken to task on what his convictions are, he can stand up to it. Why do you believe the things you believe? Why do you do the things you do? Are your actions belief driven or you are like an animal? Praise God. You know, you should even ask yourself, why are you in church? You know, these are questions I asked myself when I was young, and it helped me to put life in perspective. I'm not confused. No matter how religious, I, I can never be confused. I'm not confused about where to draw the line between my faith, what I believe. I'm not, there's no confusion there. So you must get to that point where you can ask yourself in very clear language, why am I here? What motivates you to wake up in the morning and say you want to go to church? You must ask yourself, what are your beliefs? What are your values? What are your convictions? I've shared my testimony with you guys many times. I have changed job many times because of my convictions, my value systems. Hallelujah. Are we here today? I hope I'm communicating. Doesn't look like a fantastic preaching, but when you don't have a clear idea, your emotions and decisions become your become externally dictated. 
When you are not clear about what your values are, your convictions are, your emotions, your belief system, your emotions and your decisions become externally dis dictated. You adopt the value and core beliefs and opinion of others, of your friends, of your colleagues. You do things not because you believe in them, but because somebody else is doing it. Praise God. Because, oh, your pastor doesn't see anything wrong with it, so it must be right. You've never really sat down to analyze, is this thing right? Praise God, you know, when we go for single seminars, you know, when singles come to ask me some questions, I'm sorry, let me annoy the singles, some stupid questions like, what is wrong with having sex before marriage? You come to ask me, that is it a, <laughs> do you understand? No, even if I tell you that nothing is wrong, you know, you know, are you looking for a validation? You know, you must sit down as an individual, your actions must be belief and conviction driven, not just out of everybody is doing it. Praise God, am I communicating? No, when they come and ask me some, some of such questions, I'll just be wondering, Ah, why? Okay, nothing is wrong. Go ahead and keep doing it. Praise God. And this way, you have no clue what your personal boundaries are, even if they have been violated. You know, when you are not clear about what your beliefs are, when you are not clear about what your core values are, when you are not clear about what your life's goal, you know, last two Sundays ago, I, I mentioned that no matter how rich Davido is, even if you like, let him buy the whole of Lagos, it does not bother me. In fact, I'm totally, I don't bloody care. It doesn't, because our values are different, our life's goals are different. So it doesn't, it doesn't cross my mind as success. I don't feel he has succeeded. I am not judging him whether he has succeeded or not. But I'm saying that his life's achievement is not an inspiration to me. Because our life's goals are very different. Our life's goals are very, very different. So you must have a life goal. You must sit down and critically analyze your belief systems. You know, when you have those things, when your boundary is being crossed, you cannot say, see, see, guy, no, 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 that's a red line. That is a red line. If you cross it, I will take action. And like I always say, if you are a man going somewhere, you must have things you forbid. Are you here today, please? I hope I'm communicating. Oh. When you have clear values. For example, when I was working in Ekbuma, then in Zeni Bank, I had a policy that I, don't, I won't stay away with my... I will not be separated from my family. I won't. I won't be separated from my family. It's, it's against my, my own standards. That maybe my wife will now be in Lagos. I'll be in Benin. I don't like that. I, I, I wouldn't cope. I wouldn't want to have that kind of experience. So it's very simple. You know, because of that value, it was easy for me to change jobs. Very easy. It was very easy. I didn't need to go back to God, say, God, um, is it your will? I, I want to change this job. Is it your... How can you make this kind of career move? I said, look, simple. I made up my mind I can never... People are relocating to New York, to Washington, not to Ekboma. I can never relocate to Ekboma. I cannot. <laughs> do, you, do you understand? I mean, I say I'm moving my, okay, because of that, I'm moving my family to Ekboma. It's two, yeah. I, I had those two options. Either move your family to Ekboma or change jobs. Or ask for a transfer. And I waited. I said, I can never move my family to Ekboma. Uh -uh. What kind of life is that? People are moving from Benin to Lagos. Lagos to London. London to New York. My own is from Benin to Ekboma. Ah! I say, no, 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 no. So, you see, my life's decision and choice became very easy because I had a very clear sense of value. A very clear sense of value and goals. So, the confusion many of us suffer today is because we don't have a very clear sense of value. We don't have. 
Praise God. Have I said that Igboma is a bad town? It's not a bad town now. Ah, uh, eh? It's standard. I'm sure by when they say standard, you know that they finished from Ambrusali University. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise God. You know, there are some people also, their life goal is to relocate to Ekuma. Uh, that's a very modest life goal. <laughs> and it's very affordable. Yeah. Praise God. It's very affordable. The money you used to pay rent in Bini can build a house in Ekuma. So it's... Uh, so the point is this, self-discovery is very key, it's important. You must know what your, your deepest values are, you must know what your, your belief systems, your convictions are, you must know what your, your life's goals are. There are some hindrances to self-discovery. The first one is the fear of finding demons. A lot of people fear the experience of examining themselves under the microscope because there's the fear of discovering that they are there can be demons in the closet. What terrifies you is that you can come to very negative conclusions about yourself. You are actually a useless guy. No wonder people really don't like you. You are really not that likable. You are so difficult. You know, am, am I speaking to people here? Or How many of you have ever really sat down to genuinely think about how, what you think about? To think about your life. I, I, do you know what? When, when deadly criminals find themselves in that time of their life where they start thinking, replaying their life like a film, that's when they make decisions. A lot of them that have got born again, it's at that point they make decisions to change. When your life plays back before your face and you are asking, you are, for example, you are reviewing why the pain that you have caused to people and you are asking yourself why. Praise God, you know. I was engaged in, um, in a program then, Church Unusual. Um, I don't, I've forgotten the name. Christian Character Development Center. Yeah, we're, we're involved in that. People who were cultists and who were ad addicts. Yes. So I was involved in their teaching. And so, you know, the first thing I did was about some young men. I think they were, were, were there any women amongst them there? I can't remember. There was one. You know, the first thing I did with some of them, and uh, you could see them break down and start crying. You know, of course, they were locked up in, a, in it's like um, a school. You don't go out for about, over a month or so. For three months, yes. You don't go out, you are in that place. Because the parent, the school was to cater them because of cultism and, and gangster behavior. So they were put there to go, and go, to go through character development. So the first thing I did with them, I wanted them to play back themselves all the bad, bad things they've done. All the bad, bad things they've done. So I asked some who said, okay, yeah, they've raped some, they've raped people. They've raped people, real serious rape, rape, they raped them badly. I raped one, two, three, four persons. So you know what I just did? I just sat them down and tried to replay the action. The action of that exercise. Then try to make them see the pain, eternal pain, or a long-lasting pain they have caused to the heart of those people.